So just to give you a little bit of uh, background on the, the sizing problem. Historically, pre-sale sizing in the storage industry has been kind of a, a little bit of a guessing game, right? There's an element of anecdotal experience that goes into it, which is tricky because the sizing tool, the sizing, the hardware that you're sizing for is always changing as a function of time. Um, and so at best, you can maybe rely on, you know, you do a POC or you have some test framework that you're, that you're basing your, your sizing on, but that's, you know, one data point, two data points. Um, and you're extrapolating from that. So, using so our goal here with uh, this particular project was to use InfoSight as a sizing differentiator, so we could really determine, in a much more scientific way, what what is going to fit on a given set of hardware for different application workloads, and really to try and do that in an application-specific and very data-driven way. And so, one of the examples I want to talk about briefly is you know sizing a CPU. What can we do with InfoSight? Well, applications, it turns out, they have very specific I.O. signatures. Um, and because we have all this InfoSight data, we can actually say, for a particular application, what are your reads versus write fraction? What, is, what fraction of your I.O. is sequential versus not sequential? What, what is the distribution of I.O. size? How does that evolve with time? All of these elements are things that we can actually quantitatively measure, take an ensemble of, and then profile different applications and understand per I.O. what amount of CPU we're going to need for our different models. Another feature that we can do is size SSD cache, which is pretty important for our business, seeing as how the SSD is one of our primary differentiators. So we have just, you know, different applications have distinct working set sizes, and again, that's something that we can quantitatively measure on the arrays that we see in the field. And so for different application prof profiles that we're observing, we can determine, you know, per unit data, how big is this working set? Application one application, say application two in this example, may have a very large fraction of data that is going into that churn on a daily basis. And so that's going to need a larger allocation of cache than, say, application three, which has very small working sets relative to the amount of data that's available. And that we quantify that and we understand how that varies from individual application instances across the install base. And that element is also key in uh, the sizing that we do. So the SSDs are used as primarily a read cache, is that? Absolutely. Yep. And the disks are, are written to, for the most part. So the disks have all the data, but the SSDs can be used as a read cache. But you also have DRAM cache as well? There is. So to give you a little bit of an explanation for how we go from data to models uh, to predictive tools from just a high level. We really try to leverage the data itself to try and give us the functional forms that we need to do to, to get to understand what we need for sizing per unit uh, workload gigabyte and, uh, and I.O. And so, you know, we, we basically try to extrapolate from that data, making as few assumptions as possible, and just sort of capturing the distribution of, uh, of points around those models to understand what the natural variance in those workloads are. And that natural variance is important because Obviously, we want to be able to, once we've constructed a particular application profile, just, yep. just yeah. the, the sum of the formula the, again. The formula. Yeah, it looks like the formula has become. <laughs> <laughs> so it is the. Uh, the please. <laughs> thought I found an error. Seems to have been garbled. Error, what's the error bound for that? <laughs> Um, yeah, not right. Another, that, that, that one's a Microsoft issue, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what was that? Microsoft issue. <laughs> there you go. So, so different applications have different uncertainty um, metrics associated with them. And that's important for as we continue to do sizings, we need to know, you know, given a particular model with a particular set of inputs, do we need more information to do a more precise sizing or not? And because we can look at the install base, we know when that's happening or not. Additionally, one of the features we've built into our sizing tool is the ability to consolidate several workloads because a lot of our customers are not just running one thing, right? So if you want 20% of application one, 50% of application two, 30% of application three, um, we will consolidate that into what ends up being one probability distribution of cache need or uh, CPU need for that particular combination of applications. Additionally, because we're able to apply different models with different levels of complexity, we have the flexibility to allow customers and, and users of the tool to insert a lot of data and get a more precise estimate or a lot less data and get 
similar estimates, but ballpark and with larger error bars. So in this particular example, I'll go into in a bit. Um, you can say, I just want to know, you know, if I just give you VDI ops, I want you to, to go look at the install base, understand what a VDI op, VDI IOP looks like, and uh, and leverage that data. But you know, if you've done a POC, you know what your profile looks like. You can add in uh, that information in directly as well. Uh, from a output perspective, we want to provide flexibility in terms of uh, what you actually, what solution you may want to select. So we compare scale out with scale up options. For example, these are a little hard to see on this screen, but uh, CS200 series for their particular workload I have sized in this example gives you the quantity of arrays. If you have three arrays, you know, for the 200 series, then you're in a good range at 54% CPU utilization expected. You have an error range, 51% to 57%, so that one becomes recommended. Of course, if you want just one array, you can go to the CS400 series and see that one of those will, will, has an expected utilization of 32%, with an, again, uh, a utilization, uh, the 68% confidence intervals is uh, provided as well. So this data is exposed to customers, and mm. what helps them make purchasing decisions? So ultimately, so at the moment, this is currently internal. We're still finishing the dog food phase. We're moving it to resellers, and uh, the goal is to ultimately expose it to customers as well. Yeah. So the, the the main the main first use case will be for um, for pre sales. So it'd yeah. be resellers, partners, and and our own sales teams, SEs. So is be, because you don't be a... you don't have to have an array to get to, to use this. In other yeah. words, right? Is, is there going to be an application which feeds this, or is it just going to be entered in? Um, so, to... so right now it's it's just entered in. So you can say, for example, that you you have a VDI instance of. Uh, 10,000 desktops um, and two exchange servers with n number of mailboxes and so on and so forth. So you answer those <laughs> questions and, and that's, uh, that's what we base it on. Is there a plan for something like we're dropping this WMI or executable on a Windows yeah. box? And yeah, we're, we're, we're exploring steps. various things of that nature. Yep. Absolutely. So we're going to be doing so. We have various initiatives to start collecting streams of stats from actual customer workloads that exist and piping that into this as well. Absolutely. So, so just to so give just, you... We, we probably just need to zip through. Okay, so I will be very zippy. I won't go as far as I uh, originally expected, but I'll show you one example here of uh, exchange sizing. This is an exchange cache sizing. So I will, again, just zip through. You can select cache versus CPU. I'm you have surprised. the ability to add... That it doesn't show, like, disks, you know, storage capacity or something like that as well as part of this... Uh, yeah, I know cache and CPU are important from a system yep. perspective, but you know, to a large extent, customers and partners are, are concerned about how much storage am I selling. Absolutely. And that's something we're, we're continuously trying to add more and more features to try and go. As we get more data up the stack, we'll be able to flesh out some more of that, those sizing features. Um, but for, for right now, we do sort of need to take some amount of data size as an input um, to, to do the, the okay. what is currently more complex sizing elements of CPU sizing and cache sizing. So it's, uh, right. it's always a work in progress, but uh, those are things we're working on expanding to. So here you can add several applications. For the moment, I'm just going to do an exchange example. I'm going to show uh, 20 terabytes of uh, exchange data, some logs. I'm going to leave the other items at, as defaults. So you can assume nimble inline compression or not. So if you're dealing with an amount of data, you, you know how much space it takes up uncompressed, but you don't know how much nimble compression you're going to get, you can say, well, compress this for me and find out. Um, you can also size via number of mailboxes. But uh, for comparison purposes, I'm going to stick with the amount of data. It gives you a summary here at the end. And then it performs the sizing. And when it's doing the sizing, what it's doing is it's looking across an ensemble of exchange users that we have in the install base. And it's trying to estimate what is the working set size that they have, and then what are the probabilities for, for what the need is. And you're given a table here. And it gives you a variety of cache configurations, and then the probability that you're going to achieve 80% hit rate and 90% hit rate. 80% is sort of where we really like everyone to be to really get the, the nimble value, and so that's why we put that first. But 90% is where you get start getting the true performance, strong performance benefits, so we do provide both numbers. What was the calculation on this for the total amount of storage? I didn't remember 20 the terabytes. 20 so this is 20 terabytes, and we're recommending 3.2 terabytes for exchange, which is a... 
Okay. Not a small amount. If we size, for example, I'll do one more quick sizing here. If I do the uh, a Windows file server example for the same amount of data, 20 terabytes, then what we're going to see when we scan those Windows file server examples, we're going to see a much smaller working set size typically um, in the non-sequential sphere. And so when we actually see the sizing, we're seeing instead of 3.2 terabytes, we're seeing 1.2 and uh, you know, if you're cash strapped, you could probably get away with 640 in terms of gigabytes. And so I had another example, but I'm probably going to, I think, turn things over to Gim here since we're short on time. Now, how do you know what workload is what within a customer's environment? Right. So some of them we have labeled for us. We actually sent out a survey where we requested some information, um, but also some, some of our customers provide that information in terms of the, the description field that they provide us on the array. And so that's sort of, at the moment, it's an opt-in sort of scenario, um, but uh, we are potentially looking into some more aggressive ways that we might be able to ask customers to give us some more systematic data about what's up on it. And additionally, we, we have a, a set of out-of-the-box performance policies. So we have ones so that are, are called Exchange okay. 2012 and SQL, blah, blah, okay. blah, and what Oracle, and so on. And so we know what volumes, uh, we, you know, we can assume what, what data is on those. 